Hello, my name is Cesar, and this is the third video of the series on the on naming, uh, naming convention, library, manager, thingy that we are doing on Python. So in the last video, uh, let me check the code. Yes. So in the last video, we did uh, defaults, so we can skip. Uh, we're working on the solved function and we can skip some of the tokens uh, as long as they uh, implement a default. So for example, here we're not passing any side because side has a default equal to M. Uh, so that's that. Uh, yeah. So today what I want to do is uh, use arguments. Uh, so th there are some required uh, a field like description and I would like to use arguments with that so I don't have to do description equals foo right so I went to that and depending on how times goes maybe do the parse which is the total opposite uh, operation so from a name going to the fields and the tokens and all that stuff like recovering the metadata from a name so let's get started okay so we're going to do a new test and in this one we want to test I will call it implicit so let's say if I pass foo like that it should resolve the same string right and actually if I pass okay, this Uh, this should be what's the default controls. If I pass just foo, this should pass, right? So it it have to understand what I mean with those things and fall back to the default. So if I try to run this, uh, we have an error saying that solves take exactly zero arguments. And that's easy to solve because solve now is taking any number of arguments. So let's run the test again. And here's the real issue. And it's saying that uh, there's no description because obviously I'm not passing the description. It's a required uh, token. So I don't want to have to put the, like, the, the key, right? So if we take a look at this code, uh, let's follow how it works. So we create a dictionary. We get the field from the active rule or the rule or whatever. And then we iterate over that row. So that would be description, site, and type in this case. It get a lookup table from the tokens. And if the lookup table is none, so it's a required thing. So let me let me put here required. So if that's the case, it assigns the the value directly. But of course we don't have it. So what we can do here is saying if keywords uh, get the field is none. If that's the case, just do whatever is not known. Just keep doing exactly what we were doing before. Right? So that's at least fixing part of the problem. Otherwise, just use the argument. Right? It looks, yeah. So values f should be equal to argument. And this case is zero, but let's use uh, an index and let's increment that. So, and, and break that. Uh, so we need uh, an index. Prefer like that. So that would, we would try to do this the first time and then the second for the second argument and so forth and so on. So this seems reasonable to me. Let's run the test and it's passing. 
Nice. So that was <laughs> the implicit argument for now. Uh, cool. So what's okay? We have time. Uh, so let's go. Let's move on to the parsing. That seems. Uh, yeah. Let's see if we can do it in the time we have. So let me create a, a whole new uh, test case, I guess. And let's call this parse uh, case. And this is unit test dot test case, right? And this should be test underscore whatever. So let's call it parsing for now. We can change these names. It's just so let me yeah let me copy this. So basically we have a name and I want to call parse a function called parse of parse. I want to pass in the name. So this will return a dictionary. Yeah, why not? And that dictionary will contain a, a few uh, keys. So the first will be description. And description will be equal to foo in this case. Second one will be size and this will be equal to middle. They will equal to type, I think we call that. And this will be equal to a control. So that kind of makes sense. Looks like a nice thing to have. Uh, notice that it returned the key on the lookup table. So actually, let me delete this center because there are two keys with the same value. So we let's keep it simple for now, and then we can kind of increase the difficulty. Let's go step by step, and also I delete that. So I, yes, so that will be middle. Okay. If I run this, uh, only one test fail. Cool, and that's test parsing. Cool, so this is failing and it's saying that the module doesn't have any function called parse, which is fair enough. So let me take the entire thing and paste it here. And let's call this parse. This will be a name, so it receives a name. We have a return value here. We have the fields. Um, we have, we need a, let's call this a split name. This will be equal to the name dot split. And let's use the underscore. Uh, so this underscore can be configurable, but let's do it like that for now. And uh, let's iterate in the field, but also keep track of the, with the index. Uh, so here we have the lookup table, but we also have like a value equal to split name y. So we have the lookup and the value. Cool. So if the lookup is equal to none, that means that it's a require. Uh, what we need to return is basically we're going to put that there and this will be a value because required there's not much we can do so that's cool otherwise uh, so this is with bound okay otherwise uh, and this is with bound okay sorry Okay, otherwise we are going to, okay, we need to loop. There may be better ways to do this, but let's keep it simple in the talk and the lookup items. So if, uh, if the value is equal to to value, write a split name, 
and the key is not underscore default so we were not taking default into account so that means we found it so in that case we are going to use this and this will be equals to the key and then we we break the the for loop is that right looks good to me I don't know, let's let's test what's going on here and it's passing cool okay that work nice okay nice <laughs> so we have it so now we can uh, parse and solve names uh, so this kind of show what's the idea, right? So in your code, if you do use this library, you always refer to these values over here, right? And and then then the library will solve the string using whatever you want to translate to. So if in a future an e becomes uh, whatever other thing, uh, it it won't matter. So that's the whole idea. So I hope it makes sense now. Uh, that's good, awesome. Time's over, great. So in the next video, uh, I think I'm going to address the elephant in the room, which is all these dictionaries and hard code like global variables. Uh, so we can set those programmatically instead of hard code stuff there. Uh, so yeah, I hope you like it and see you around. Bye bye.